Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, February 1st, 2021. I am Rochelle Batiz with the details. Minister of Finance Camilla Gonzalez is currently presenting Budget 2021 in Parliament and said the agriculture sector will play a critical role in keeping the economy of SVG afloat throughout the year. The finance minister said budget 2021 was prepared based on the lessons learned in 2020. He said that agriculture and fisheries have remained strong in spite of the hurdles, including the drought experience in the first quarter of 2020. And this year, the finance minister said that several projects will be revitalized and modernized to ensure that the sector strive in difficult circumstances. Despite COVID-related delays, the government expects to construct and procure equipment for a modern arrow root processing facility at Orange Hill in 2021. Half of the estimated $10 million for the arrow root industry revitalization project will be spent in 2021, primarily on the assembly of the factory shell purchase of machinery, improvement to the water supply, and external works. And as our route has enjoyed a resurgence, our antiquated production facilities have not been sufficient to meet the quality standards befitting its status as a pure, high-end health food for adults and babies around the world. Minister Gonzalez announced that a design for abattoir will be done and butchers will be trained in special cut of meats, which he said is even now more important for SVG, which will be in demand with more hotels being built. Emerging hotels, restaurants, and our growing middle class are increasingly demanding choice cuts of meat and production standards that only a select few can currently provide. As with our route, we intend to help livestock farmers and butchers meet contemporary... Last year, more than $1 million was given out in prime grants, and the finance minister said this will continue this year as they seek to encourage and support farming and fishing in SVG. $4.4 million has been budgeted for the Barley Blackfish facility. The finance minister said that the medical cannabis industry has a setback, but more than 2,000 pounds of raw cannabis have been collected, and this is expected to increase in 2021. To date, the Medicinal Cannabis Authority has received $5.6 million in license fees, from 312 applications. A total of 128 of those applications have been approved so far. The approvals span four distinct set of applicants. 12 groups with an aggregated membership of over 190 traditional cultivators. 62, 69 individual traditional cultivators. 29 non-traditional local cultivators and 18 companies. The finance minister said that the projection of SVG's economy is expected to contract further this year. And while the IMF projects an increase, other financial institution projections are dismal. Meanwhile, Governor General Dame Susan Duggan in her throne address said nation building should continue in 2021. An ever evolving serious public health challenge with its attendant social and economic ramifications. The need to build resilience and mitigate the risks occasioned by disasters natural and otherwise and the necessity of persevering with the overarching national development program despite the many impediments. The range of complex issues demands decisive, targeted, and multidimensional responses. Madam Speaker, the COVID-19 pandemic and the dengue outbreak have shown the wisdom of the ongoing efforts to fortify the healthcare system 
by capacity building and resilience across the sector. The Governor General said that despite the challenges SVG is facing, living must continue for all Vincentians to work together in love. The multiplicity of requisite functions and the dissemination to the public of information to guide their daily activities and safeguard the health and well-being. In order to achieve the desired objectives, the following will be pursued over the short and medium term. The design and construction of an acute referral hospital at Annasville. The design and building of a modern geriatric residential care facility at the current site of the Lewis Ponet home. In other news, the Sponex V COVID-19 vaccine out of Russia has arrived in the state, but only 20 samples will be administered here as a trial. This was announced on radio on Sunday by Prime Minister Dr. Raul Gonzalez, who said the vaccine will be given to volunteers, mainly from the health sector, on an emergency basis. So, been in contact with the, with the Russian government through the ambassador to deal with the the Sputnik, the, 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 Sput, the Sputnik vaccine, in fact, um, has advised that trial doses of for the Sputnik vaccine, 20, 20 persons um, came. They will, will have to do that. That will have to be on, on an emergency basis for persons particularly voluntarily in the health sector who may want to take. Russia is one of the countries that SVG is looking to source COVID-19 vaccines from, independent of the COVAX facility. PM Gonzalez said that the purchase of the Sputnik vaccine from Russia has not yet been authorized by the World Health Organization. However, they are undergoing pre-authorization discussions. He said that the vaccine that SVG is likely to get from the COVAX facility will be the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. AstraZeneca through um, this other intermediary, which, well, I should mention the intermediary really, the, the, the chairperson, the media past chairperson of the, the Mosti company been very involved with the Mustique Charitable Trust, mm -hmm. who had been closely associated with persons at Oxford. And uh, I, I, um, I gave instructions on Friday to order a particular quantity, a significant quantity, also of the AstraZeneca, which um, the Mustique Charitable Trust may pay for us. Among the 20 frontline workers who volunteered to take the first shot of the Russian vaccine today was infectious disease specialist Dr. Gerald Thompson. In a telephone interview with SVG TV News, Dr. Thompson, who is a member of the SVG COVID-19 Task Force, detailed his experience and how he felt after getting the shot. I just got vaccinated. I feel great. I feel wonderful. So they check my blood pressure, they check my pulse, check my temperature. I give all the demographic information, and they were able to give me the vaccine. Um, it did not hurt me one bit, and I was told that I have to check my arm. They told me all the information, check me, told me watch for any uh, temperature, if I get any muscle aches, if I get any joint pain, if I get any fever, if I have any redness at the site of injection or things of that nature, the normal thing. And if I do... That normally indicates that the vaccine is working. Dr. Thompson acknowledged that while Sputnik vaccine has not received full approval, the recipients took the sample vaccine as part of a local trial, which will allow the experience of the individuals to be tracked and the subsequent findings reported to the Vincentian public. Dr. Thompson said apart from the samples, SVG awaits the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine under the COVAX facility for widespread distribution. We expect really to receive our first 
batch of vaccines as being the AstraZeneca. This is the Oxford University AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. And that is due to arrive in due course. But by having these first samples, we are able to go through what we call our own local trial. So by having volunteers receive it, we are able to track um, what is taking place and be able to also report to the people of St. Vincent and Grandis what has been the experience of these individuals. According to Dr. Thompson, both the Sputnik vaccine and the Oxford vaccine, which will soon be available to the Vincentian public, are manufactured using similar methods with collaborations between both creators ongoing. He added that the first 20 samples of the Sputnik vaccine were taken to reassure the Vincentian public of any misgivings of being vaccinated. He said while there may be some hesitation of taking the Sputnik vaccine because it is from Russia, Persons must be reminded that good things are made in many different places. The reason uh, we will be given these uh, 20 is to monitor this before we are really able to receive other vaccines so that the people of St. Michigan would know that mm -hmm. there are health individuals who have received it and that they are well and that they have um, gone through the vaccination process and they're quite happy about it and they now are protected and so they should have no misgivings about receiving another vaccine. The Sputnik V vaccine has been made almost in an identical way to the Oxford AstraZeneca so that they are very similar in their makeup and the methodology of making the vaccine. Matter of fact, um, Oxford University AstraZeneca, they are collaborating with the developers of Sputnik. Commenting on the vaccination schedule that will be put in place once available for widespread distribution, Dr. Thompson said while vaccination will not be mandatory, persons will be encouraged to get themselves vaccinated while certain sectors and districts may be specifically targeted. Around the world, there is a lot of what we call vaccine nationalism, and it's very difficult to obtain vaccines because some countries are buying up four or five the amount that you actually need for the size of their population, and it's causing a lot of tension in the outside international world. But we are working very quietly, and we have a number to uh, what the Prime Minister would have said through the COVAX mechanism and through other persons who have been willing to put forward some um, funding that we expect to be able to get a fair amount of the vaccine. But remember, it's not going to be mandatory so that we would understand there are some persons who would want uh, to, to, to hold up. But we are certainly going to be encouraging persons who are frontline workers on, on, on you know, healthcare workers police firm and custom workers and so forth, the aged, the elderly, people with diabetes, hypertension. We have a schedule of how and we know the numbers of persons we'll be looking to Given the number of adverse allergic reactions that have been recorded by persons who receive the Pfizer vaccine, Dr. Thompson said that no serious adverse allergic reactions have been reported with the Sputnik vaccine thus far. The 20 volunteer recipients of the Russian vaccine are due for a second shot on February 21st, 2021. St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the weekend period from Friday, January 29th to Sunday, January 31st, recorded 86 new COVID-19 cases. 31 of these cases were recorded on Friday, 5 on Saturday, and 50 on Sunday. Since March 2020, SVG has recorded 951 cases of the viral illness. The figure includes 802 local cases. Persons 
persons in the country with no recent travel history. In a news release announcing the 15 new cases on Sunday night, the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, said the total number of recoveries remains at 251 and there were no new recoveries. 698 cases remain active and two persons with COVID-19 have died. NEMO said all positive cases will remain isolated until cleared and all close contacts of positive cases are asked to contact the flu clinic in their district to arrange testing for clearance. All residents of and visitors to St. Vincent and the Grenadines are reminded of the importance of consistently wearing facial coverings but practicing physical distancing and frequent hand washing or sanitization to reduce the likelihood of being infected with the virus which causes COVID-19. In less than one month, 788 cases of COVID-19 were recorded in SVG. Speaking on SVG TV's Viewpoint program last evening, infectious disease specialist Dr. Gerald Thompson said that the main reason for the spike in the COVID-19 cases is because of travelers who breached their quarantine. I think some persons came in who came with a negative test. And when they had their first test that was also negative, then we noticed that they were testing positive on day five. And then there were some persons who were totally disregarding the quarantine process. And they were moving out. We had what they call like APBs, the police looking for them, trying to find them. And some unfortunate couple of them were also positive. And Sadly, I would say there were some persons who not only tested negative on day one, having come with a negative test, and tested negative on day five, but some point in time later, they were a late positive case. And they too, some of them, we picked them up very early, but others would have breached the protocol and would have gone into the community. And we believe that it is these groups the breaching of the protocols that would have caused this spike. The infectious disease specialist said that when the pandemic started, the country put measures in place that were successful from March up to December 2020. He, however, noted that during the Christmas holiday season, persons failed to adhere to the COVID-19 recommendations of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Vincent was lauded for its methodology and even though some persons criticized and would have said, listen, a ship, a, a, our sailors come in, let them walk off the ship. We said, no. And then flights coming in, people said, why should we stay in a hotel? Well, that meant that the healthcare workers could go to that hotel and test 10, 12, 13 persons at the same time instead of having to travel all over the country and give people a chance. But um, I'm coming for the Christmas. and. I think during the Christmas festivities, um, there would have been persons congregating in their homes, not adhering to the recommendations with respect to how they should have a safe distance and space between them. And the level of wearing of a mask was not as high as it should be. In terms of measures being taken to help slow the spread of the virus, Dr. Thompson, who is a member of the COVID-19 task force, said they have revised the protocols and continue to appeal to persons to adhere to the protocols, especially those in quarantine. Appeal to all Vincentians that there are some set protocols that we want you to follow. And if we weren't following those in December and they allowed for this particular outbreak, I'm saying to you, Jennifer, that there is a thinking and the protocol that hands, face, and space, or hands, space, and face, that by washing your hands or using a hand sanitizer, by having that safe distance between persons, and by wearing a mask, if we weren't doing that before in early December and before, I'm 
we would now like to make that a mantra, uh, our duty. We would like that every Vincentian, our visitor, or persons who are here, that whilst you are here in St. Vincent Grinding, is that you follow that protocol of hands, space, and face. And in some news now on the Lasso Frey volcano, we hear that the new lava dome is being closely monitored as the danger it now poses could affect the outer walls of the crater. So says Professor Richard Robertson, who was speaking on NBC's face-to-face -face program this morning. Speaking via Zoom, Dr. Robinson, who is back in Trinidad, said that instruments such as the reflective mirror were successfully installed at the summit of the volcano, which will record any changes taking place in the crater. Really, really very preliminary. One of the things that um, a, a mass of rock pressing against the crater wall could do is that it could cause it to, to potentially fail. We don't think that's likely right now, but just in case as the dome gets bigger, we expect the possibility of that to perhaps increase. So what we have done is put a, a mark on the, on the crater, essentially on the wall, something that allows to measure very precisely from away from it um, if that point is moving. And that will tell us if there's a chance or the chance has changed in terms of it potentially being compromised by the weight of the dome. Uh, so it's still pretty early days yet for that because the dome is still um, not sufficiently large, we think. Professor Robertson noted that the new dome continues to effusively erupt. However, it is not growing in height at a fast rate. It's gaining height, but not as much as it's expanding laterally. In fact, it's moving sideways faster than it, than it is getting height. As, as people would have noted, We've said it, um, we said it was around 60 meters high uh, for three weeks ago. It's now increased to about 80 meters. And it's been a function around that for a little while, while laterally it's spreading much faster. That is what is expected, given the kind of material you have, given the, the nature of the ground, given the way in which it moves. It has to do with what Scott has discussed, the stickiness of the, of the material and the way in which it moves. We would expect it to continue to be more lateral its movement, sort of moving sideways more and then high. And that's actually a good thing because it means that it's going to take longer before it gets to the stage where it's as high as the place, as, as the lowest part of the crater rim. And then Meanwhile, Professor Robertson said the new monitoring team has settled in and continued to work in the fields and from the Belmont Observatory in Rose Hall. It's done reservations to the building that allowed scientists to, to stay and also to the observatory. You see the observatory become more um, sort of routinely operated uh, rather than just being a base for us to do stuff. They'll actually wear the scientific staff and people. While they're there, they'll be putting some additional seismic instruments, some additional GPS instruments. Um, they'll be doing some more, um, essentially, as you said, putting some more monitoring um, instruments to, to gather data. One of the things they'll focus on is the gas, the gas output. That's one of the things that Dr. Christopher uh, specialized in. Um, and really moving forward, getting more operational in terms of getting more routine in terms of what we're doing, you know, probably bringing in some volunteers. To Vincentians are now paying more for LPG cooking gas. The announcement came in a news release issued on Saturday, January 30th by the Agency for Public Information. Although no reason was given for the increase, the release states that in exercise of the powers conferred by the Price and Distribution of Goods Act, Cap 161, the following are the new maximum prices of liquefied petroleum gas as of today, Monday, February 1st, 2021. A 20-pound gas will now be, will be sold for $33.95 in Area 1, $34.95 in Area 2, $35.95 in Area 3, and $38.95 in Area 4. A a 25 pound gas will now be sold for $41.20 in area 1, $42.20 in area 2, $43.20 in area 3, and $46.20 in area 4. A 100 pound gas will now be sold for $164.70 in all areas except area 4, which will be sold for $185.70. 
Area 1 means areas within a radius of 2 miles of the courthouse in Kingstown. Area 2 means areas adjoining Area 1, extending from Area 1 northeast to Lanley Park and northwest to Curtains, including all areas lying between Lanley Park and Curtains. Area 3 means all areas on the mainland other than those falling within Area 1 and 2. Area 4 means the Grenadines. The release further noted that under the Price and Distribution of Goods Act, Cap 161, no person shall, in respect of any goods for which the maximum price has been fixed, sell or buy or agree to sell or buy any such goods at a price greater than the maximum prices. It said any person who contravenes this provision is guilty of an offense and liable to a fine of not less than $1,500, but not more than $3,000. The hunting season for mammals, which includes Ompasun, Omaniku, and Ogoti. Aguti and reptiles, including iguana, is now closed. The close season is from February 1st to September 30th. Director of Forestry Fitzgerald Providence said during this time, the mammals and reptiles must be given the opportunity to make young ones and rest. Well, the close season for partially protected wildlife species of rap reptiles and mammals um, started on the 1st of February. And we need to close the hunting, the hunting season because um, the animals need to rest, they need to reproduce and build back the population after hunting season so that we will have animals to hunt in the in the next season when it is when it opens in October. So I'm asking the general public and, and hunters in particular to not go out there and hunt um, at this time because we need to protect the species. We would have our patrol unit out uh, monitoring, but we can't be in all places. So I'm asking that we do not hunt and we protect the species. Let them let them rest and let them um, be able to replenish so that we'll have them for the next hunting season. Providence said if anyone is caught hunting these mammals and reptiles during the close season will be guilty of an offense and liable to prosecution. According to the Wildlife Act Chapter 55 Section 17. Persons who are found caught hunting during the, the close season can be fined and taken to court and they can be charged and if it's a repeat offense they can be confined so we ask persons not to hunt during the the close season and also you cannot hunt in any wildlife reserve at any time so even though they are still the the birds the, the season for birds are still on we ask persons not to hunt in wildlife reserves and i mentioned them as kingsill forest um, the Cumberland Forest, the Vermont, uh, Dalloway Forest area, and also. The forestry director noted that the hunting season for birds is still open. However, they are appealing to persons not to hunt endangered species like the parrots. Uh, the birds goes until the end of this month, February, um, February the 28th. And I'm asking persons to, even in still hunting the birds, not, the hunt, not to hunt the protected species, which includes the parrot, the, the black hawk, and the chicken hawks, and um, other migratory birds. Meanwhile, Providence used the opportunity to warn about the dangers of bushfires and appeal to persons not to burn fires, bushes, sorry, in this dry season. The grass or the dry lemongrass is, is a temptation for persons to burn. And this is not very good. It destroys the environment. It adds more pollutants to the environment. And particularly where we are very concerned about respiratory diseases, asthma, um, sinuses, and so on, we ask persons not to burn the vegetation. 
Commander of the SVG Coast Guard Service, Brenton Kane, will be celebrating 35 years in the SVG Coast Guard Service tomorrow, Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Commander Kane, who was enlisted on February 2nd, 1986, has amassed vast experience, knowledge, and expertise in navigation, seamanship, and leadership over his long and distinguished career. In a telephone interview with SVG TV News, Commander Kane spoke on what has sustained him over the years. The most high, the God, I'm a God-fearing man, and I put all my um, trust in him. But outside that, the environment in which I work, I love the sea. And some people work because they, they want a salary. I work because I love what I'm doing. Uh, second to that, my co-workers, they are very supporting nice individual very easy commander kane said perseverance and discipline are what is needed to make it through the service he said his motto never let them see you sweat is what he used to get him through tumultuous times it's spread out over the years since i'm here at the helm we managed to get um, to open a sub base in canaman the large vessel captain malzac increase of staff and all this is is attribute to the, the support I get from the government. Um, we just acquired a medical evacuation vessel. So I think I I've accomplished a lot as I spread it out over the over the years. Perseverance is one. You had to have a good positive attitude because life is very dynamic. I've struggled during my career. Sometimes there are things that I think should have been better as regards me and my upward mobility and it wasn't there but I didn't say oh that's it I stick around and I, I have a motto that I use that never make the sea sweat speaking on the legacy he hopes to leave as his retirement looms commander Kane detail his plans for leaving a book of standard operations by which the SVG Coast Guard service will be able to reliably depend on to ensure that anyone from the bottom up can take command if necessary and Commander Brenton Kane joined the SVG Coast Guard on February 2nd 1986 SVG TV congratulates him on his milestone achievement meanwhile Sunday January 31st 2021 marks the 50th anniversary of the death of Captain Hugh Mulzak the person whom the Coast Guard her flagship is named after as a commemorative gesture the family of the late Captain Hugh Mulzak handed over a book to Commander Kane and the staff of the SVG Coast Guard service today Commander Kane handed over a small token to the family of Captain Hugh Malzac. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force said it is carrying out investigations into a series of reported burglaries where Dwayne Jacobs is a person of interest. The police is asking your assistance in locating the subject. If seen, persons are asked to contact any police station or the assistant commissioner of police in charge of crimes at telephone number 1784-456-1339 or 457-1211 extension 217 or the officer in charge of the South Central Division at telephone number 1784-458400. Calls they say would be treated confidentially.